So it's time for me to jump into some stupid internet drama. So I saw this video by a creator named Harinko about Atomic Heart, a game that is widely anticipated because of its rather unique setting and inspiration from Bioshock. Unfortunately, the creators of said game are Russian, so you know they're going to be dragged into something about what their government does, even though they make video games and foreign policy decisions, which is what this video is. It starts with Harenko telling off people who won't change their minds that they should go listen to their Joe Rogan podcast or play Call of Duty. So you know this guy's about to be completely insufferable. Go on, you have a Joe Rogan podcast to catch up on or play Call of Duty or something, I don't know. Off you go. After that, he admits he's Ukrainian. Being Ukrainian myself. So, now we know why this video got made. This is someone who has skin in the war, and it's understandable why he might not want to buy Russian products. Though if he really cared that much about his homeland, he should probably be critiquing nations that buy gas from Russia instead of a video game company, as I can assure you one of these is actually benefiting the war effort, and it's not the one that's a video game. The next comment he makes is about the maker of the game, Munfish, and how they've been sort of quiet about the fact that they were originally a Russian company. On the website of the studio, there is currently no mention of the fact that this is a Russian game dev. I'm not sure if Hanko knows this, but we call this business tactics, because Russia is one of the most sanctioned countries in the world. And if you want to sell a product, it's generally a good idea to not try to sell that product in a country under sanctions. That, if they even mention the Russian anyway, they would just get flack, like they are right now. Harenko then furthers this critique about Munfish being Russian by bringing up a tweet they posted about how they're not political and are a pro-peace organization against violence. And is undeniably a pro-peace organization against violence against people. Any sane person would see that and go, oh yeah, that's a reasonable thing for a company to say because they're not trying to get involved in geopolitics. Yet, somehow it's hypocritical according to Harenko because he's one of those people who don't understand politics and games. And he shows it by saying this. We do not comment on politics or religion. Rest assured, we're a global team focused- Hold on, stop. We do not comment on politics? You're making a game that sole idea is USSR renewal and communism. You classified your game as inspired by Bioshock and Prey, yet you go the no politics in my video game route? This is one step away from the types of gamers who say, I don't like politics in my video game, and then immediately open up Fallout. And in the future, if you want an easy rebuttal against this terrible argument, just post this image, because it's true. Herenko then goes on to say that the CEO of the company is going under a different and less Russian name, and used to work for a Russian social media company. Whose name is Robert Pagratuni. Except that it isn't. His actual name is Maxim Zatsepin. Max previously had a position of a creative director slash top manager in Mail.ru, which is now presented as VK, the biggest social media platform in Russia. Okay. Uh, what's your point? I mean, I would expect that. I mean, he's a Russian guy. I would expect him to work for a Russian company. Like, I, who cares? No, really, like, who cares? After that, Harenko discusses something that I agree with, and that's marketing and this sort of shady and gross pre-order thing they're doing. BMAT was a $60 base game, $90 pre-order for Gold Edition, and $100 for Premium Edition. Pre-orders like this that have different editions, like Gold and Premium, are bad. And it should stop. No, like, I really do agree with this. This is a good point. Unfortunately, he follows it up with this weird statement about how you would lose money if the game never came out, which is not true at all. For something that might not come out ever, practically losing your money. If you were to do what most normal people do and pre-order it through Steam, you'd be able to refund the game at any time prior to the release date. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Harenko really understands this, and this whole marketing section honestly just feels bad. Other than the pre-order part, which is legit criticism, the rest of the video just feels like personal issues that he has with him being Russian, and less about if the game is good or bad. And there is exactly two minutes of badly made teaser trailer footage with no gameplay to serve as the video game's representation and marketing. The game didn't even have a release date, or even a release year at the time. Rise, as many people called this out to be a fake footage from a video game that doesn't exist, made by a shadow company with no records, just to scam people out of their pre-order money. Harenko then moves on to economics and investors. He mentions Tencent, Gaijin Entertainment, and Gem Capital, and about how they're all invested in the company. Chinese Tencent, 
and Russian GEM Capital and Gaijin Entertainment. The head of the PR, Konstantin Hovorun, illegally visited the Ukrainian Crimea, which is temporarily occupied by Russia, and repeatedly spoke in support of the policies and politics of the Russian Federation. Now, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but what does this have to do with Munfish? This is a guy who works for the investment company, okay? He doesn't work for Munfish. He doesn't represent any of their ideals. He has nothing to do with them other than the investment. Also, not to be that guy or that soy jack or whatever, but can we get a source on this? I mean, did this come from your dreams? You're not providing any evidence that he was someone who is supporting Russian Federation ideas. The more interesting connections Harenko found, though, were that Gem Capital and how it was founded by a guy who used to work for a Russian gas company and hung out with Russian oligarchs and was also involved with social media companies. Previously worked at Gazprom's subsidiary, Gazenergoset. The studio raised investments from them in 2021, where Anatoly met and became friends with oligarchs who got rich on oil and gas activities. And yeah, this is probably all true, but I'm gonna have to engage in some whataboutism and point out the fact that Activision fully cuddles up with the Pentagon for their Call of Duty games. This is not solely a Russian thing. Uh, everyone mixes with everyone, you know, it's a big club and we're not in it. He also brings up the privacy policy, which apparently says on the website that they can forward your data to the Russian government. It says that your information can and will be transferred to the Russian government, in particularly the Federal Security Service, and not just your username, but your full name, physical address, email, phone number, IP address, and so on. This is a good point, and it's something that's completely unacceptable. I agree with Herringo here. The Russian Federation should not have access to these people's information just because they were on the Munfish website. So if they haven't fixed this, they need to immediately. Unfortunately, he ruins this point immediately by making this weird joke about how Russia must be getting info to mobilize people, which... Is he aware that Ukraine has a draft? Gotta say, their mobilization methods are getting kinda dire. Harenko's <laughs> next point is about aesthetic. He says that because Munfish is using the USSR as a setting and aesthetic, they are somehow praising it. The game is filled to the brim with USSR-themed keepsakes and memorabilia, from drinking condensed milk straight out of the can to actual flags and symbols of the USSR hammer and sickle. This kind of approach to the showcase of USSR and communism walks a thin line between using it for world building and praising it. So, with that logic, what would make the Wolfenstein the new order then? Considering it uses the aesthetics of a certain ideology quite a bit, including the flag. Does that mean Wolfenstein is somehow pro that ideology? And if it is, do you care? Or is that cool with you because, well, you know. Harko also points to the advertising of the game in which they use slogans from the USSR during a dinner, which is strange, I will admit. A Remedy lead gameplay designer rightfully accused Monfish of being nostalgic about the Soviet regime, or even glorifying it. I don't get the feeling there's some sort of cult of USSR supporters. The Soviet Union is looked at very differently in Russia than it is in the West, so for them to do this, it's really not that crazy. Another point he brings up after this is so stupid. He's talking about the sexualization of robots, and I don't feel like typing anything out in response to that, so here's this image, and this is going to be my response. None other than through sexualization and objectification of women. So far I have avoided showing these characters on screen, but I am talking about the couple of female USSR-styled robots that they suddenly added in recent trailers and thumbnails to get the attention of the lusty neckbeards. And here we are at the end of the video. Henrico tells anyone who's pre-ordered the game to refund it, and also if you can, to send the money to a Ukrainian charity. The first and the best step would be to cancel it, request a refund, and send that exact amount of money to Ukrainian charities. Well, don't worry, Harenko, because my tax dollars already go to you guys. Hopefully, you don't have a lot of corruption, because that would... Oh. Oh, no. Also, why did you delete so many comments? I saw this pinned message you left saying that the comments were being botted by new and faceless accounts. But I can't see any of that, because you've deleted all but 121 comments on a video that has 1.4 million views. And I'm not gonna call you a liar or anything, but I really doubt that every comment was some Russian troll bot or whatever. I mean, I would imagine there were many fair critiques of your bad video, and it's very strange that you'd delete them. 
But I digress. You know, in the end, you really are allowed to spew that sort of nonsense if you want to. And if that video really did speak to you, go ahead and boycott the game. You know, whatever makes you feel good about yourself. Though, like I said earlier, I don't think boycotting a video game will stop a war that's been brewing for years. But hey, it's your decision, not mine. See ya.